I mean, I, I, I think the biggest thing was to just give these guys some rest. I mean, I, I just don't, the travel in the 9 p.m. games for these guys, it just, it just wore them down. Um, and as hard as they were playing, and you know, Louisville, we didn't get back until almost 2 in the morning. Then we played Illinois, they didn't get, they didn't get to bed until 2. Then we played Wisconsin 9 p.m. We didn't get in home until 5. Then we played on the road, we didn't get home until 3 from New York. Uh, and then we play at night. Then we play at 9 p.m. against UCLA. It's it, it's not one 9 p.m. It's the nine in a row. Um, that just kind of they, they're worn down. Um, and we played, you know, they need to throw finals on there. Um, they're trying to do finals. They're trying to get everything ready. So to give them three days off after the UCLA game, I thought they. I think that's why we looked a little rough offensively. But I think defensively they kind of got their. You know, they were really locked in on the scout report. We switched all the stuff we were supposed to switch. I just thought they looked mentally fresh. Uh, uh, Coach, this, what, what went into the decision to uh, start I mean, working with over Don Carey? Uh, I'm trying. The problem with, uh, you know, when I give Jameer a break with Jahari, um, usually Don, Don then comes out and Ian goes in. And that's really where we've gotten in trouble. We haven't gotten in trouble with the starting lineup. The starting lineups, are, their plus is great. So what I try to do today, because I, I had a little bit of confidence in the game, was just see if I can get Johari and Don together a little bit, so that when we sub, we're not having the drop off that we've had. Because we've only been down, we haven't got off the great start, but we have only been down four or five or six, and all of a sudden we sub, we go down 13 really quick. Um, so I'm trying to experiment with a little bit of like, all right. When I put Don in, at least I, I know I'm having someone that could be a scorer that's a veteran with Jahari. And so really that was all that was all it was, was me kind of just tinkering a little bit, just seeing if I could, the drop off wouldn't be as big as it's been. And a follow up, how, how pleased were you with Patrick Williams before for stepping in for? Yeah, I mean, Pat's been awesome all year. I mean, unfortunately for Pat, he's just like, a, he's a walking band-aid. Um, he's had sprained ankle, sprained ankle, and then he, he got, Tennessee game, like the first four minutes of the game, he gets, he sprains his toe when some guy dies on him. Um, when he's kind of in rhythm and consistent, he's he's been really good all year. It's just his problem is he hasn't been healthy. So I'm hoping this time off, I can kind of get him right. Uh, kind of, uh, it's kind of loud. Uh, building off of that with the lineup changes uh, with Julian. Is this another precautionary thing, or do you anticipate this could be something that could keep him out even for the next game or after that? I, can't, I don't talk about injuries. Um, I know you talked during that stretch of games about the importance of getting some guys in off the bench in, in the right situations. Um, you had 10 players in the first eight minutes today. What did this game kind of allow you to do with the people off the bench and have that kind of help develop them? Kind of, it just kind of gave them a chance for guys that, that have been practicing hard and working hard to get out and play a little bit. Um, I think in, a, in a, an environment that was a little bit less stressful than playing Wisconsin, Illinois, Tennessee, and UCLA. So it's a little bit of a break in that. Um, kind of gives me see where guys are. And I thought, you know, guys like Ike and Noah, um, you know, even Cal, um, just to get him out there and have him get some game time. Because he practices really good, but man, as a freshman, you get really nervous. And, you know, the only way you get over those nerves is playing a little bit. Um, now that December conference game seem to be so normal now, what challenges as a coach does it present you to do that dipping in and out of conference, non-conference, conference, non-conference? It's non a really good question. Um, it's challenging. I think it's it's really the game you play before and the games you play after, I think, are really important in December because you're still trying to develop people. I don't, I don't like early December games. I, I don't think it makes sense. I wouldn't mind having late December conference games because then you just gear them right up into it. Um, but I, and this is the first time that I've kind of gone through it. So it's more or less, I think it's really important schedule-wise to make sure that uh, going into conference play, you're not beat up, and then make sh making sure afterwards you give yourself a little bit of time to uh, see what you need to be tweaked. And like, you know, that was a tough thing about this schedule is we saw some things that needed to be tweaked, but we, we just didn't have time to do anything. So I think you just have to be really strategic in how you schedule before and after. 
And you talked about tinkering with the lineup during your practices. Do is that where you do the tinkering? Do you just have everyone practice together to see how it works? Do you do it specifically? How do you arrive at that? Trying to take all my secrets. <laughs> um, no, like so. This week going in, um, I switched Don and Ian, and so Jameer can play with Ian a little bit more. Don can play, but for the most part, I usually keep units with units, just so they get they get kind of get used to playing with each other. Um, every once in a while, you tinker, but for the most part, this time of year, we're we're pretty much set. Gotcha. Yeah. The sharp play offensively at the start of the second half seemed like that was a, a bump up from what we saw for most of the first half. What, what do you think kind of changed for you guys? Was just a few shots going? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I, I think it was just a matter of I, I did focus a lot this week on just defense, trying to get back on defense. I didn't really, we really didn't do that much offensively. Um, I really tried to get them back into that mindset, being aggressive, getting after it. We worked on our press a ton. Um, because we haven't been scoring, so we haven't been getting into our press. I just think it was a little bit more of just falling into the rhythm of the game and seeing the ball go in, and it, it kind of just went from there. Vaughn, over to Ryan. Josh. Josh, then Nick and Ben, I should probably do Hey, Coach. Um, after the game, Hart had got elbowed in the first half. It seemed like to um, spark the offense. Can you just um, talk about that, or what do you think led to um, the team build a 19 point I, lead? The one thing I've learned about this team, if you look at our stats, wins and losses, and plus minus wins or losses, and, and you really break down the statistics, there's one person that's a key factor for us. And I got on and key hard pretty good, pretty hard this this these three days because he is a he is a difference maker. When he is engaged and he's playing, he's going, he just gives us such a different dimension offensively, even defensively. Um, so he came over and he was complaining that he had elbow and I kind of just got on him just a little bit and we had a man-to-man -man conversation. And he's he's a difference maker when he plays like that. He's a he's a ball level guard. All right, Nick, you yeah, uh, St. Peter's had a couple runs with a couple offensive rebounds and they finished with uh, 17. Um, is that just something that life without Julian Reese is going to be like, or is there something? No, I mean. It, yeah, I mean, I, I do think, you know, Pat's not going to be a, a, a major rebounder, but, like, you know, it, it's it's something to do with our switching on defense. We get we get Dante on the perimeter a little bit too much where because we switch so much and we try to keep things off balance for that team, we do have sometimes Dante not in there rebounding, um, and it does hurt us at times. We don't switch as much against bigger teams, but smaller teams like this we do. Um, like, we don't. We didn't switch against Tennessee at all, but we still, I mean, we're just not a big team, so I don't think we're ever going to be a great rebounding team. I think our goal is just to be a good rebounding team. Everybody have a great holiday. Thank you.